The left's love affair with the nation's deadliest criminal gang continues tonight. The howls of outrage reverberating President Trump dared criticize MS-13 by calling them animals. Watch. He basically seems to assume that everybody is part of MS-13. Very strange to hear the President of the United States speak in such dehumanizing terms. Clearly, the President wants a war against Latinos. You might make that distinction between members of MS-13 and the rest of the Latino community and the rest of the immigrant community. I assure you that most of Americans don't make that distinction when he says we're animals. When he says we're animals. Things are moving fast in this country. By 2020, defending Central American street gangs will likely be a key plank in the Democratic platform. It's close now. You can see it. Maybe Bernie Sanders will feel the burn a little more literally. Kamala Harris's campaign will certainly be stronger together with the added muscle of, <laughs> of Guatemalan street gangs. Uh, don't laugh. It's actually more plausible than you think it is. Don't believe us? Here's what CNN contributor Anna Navarro said this Wednesday about Trump's animal remark. Quote, Trump is in very bad company. Nazis referred to Jews as rats. Slave owners viewed slaves as subhuman animals. Now, here's what Navarro herself had to say about Trump just two years ago. Quote, should Trump drop out of the race? Yes, he should drop out of the human race. He's an animal. Apologies to animals. Apparently, Donald Trump can be dehumanized, and that's fine. MS-13, though, a gang that butchers high schoolers with machetes, that's too far. But on the left, that's exactly the state of play. As of this evening, MS-13 runs drugs, of course. It commits murders, and it terrorizes entire immigrant communities. But they don't ask questions about diversity, so they're okay. Questioning diversity is the highest crime you can commit, according to the left. Questioning diversity imperils their entire worldview. It suggests that people are not interchangeable, and the particular people who inhabit a particular country matter. That's unacceptable, far more unacceptable than, say, murdering a teenager in Long Island. That doesn't even warrant a serious attempt at deportation. Joining us tonight is Leslie Marshall. She's a progressive radio show host and a keen observer of the Democratic Party. Leslie, good to see you. Good to see you, Tucker. So you're, you're seeing all the leaders of the Democratic Party, Schumer, Pelosi, its surrogates, the entire American news media virtually, singing from the same song sheet. This is a coordinated uh, storyline. Who thought of this? What consultant convinced Democrats running in defense of MS-13 was a good way to go into the midterms? Well, uh, first of all, I think it was very clear, uh, quite frankly, and I know fellow Democrats get angry at me, that the president was answering a question that the sheriff posed regarding the gang members. The issue yeah. here, Tucker, is not support of gangs or gang members. I have an 11-year-old son. And as you know, uh, MS-13 starts as young as 11 and goes up to 40. It's calling yeah. human beings animals. Now, wait a minute. I know when you look at what MS-13 does, it's hard to say, well, are they human beings? When you have an 11-year-old child who is fearful for their and their family's life in a very impoverished area, and you think, how can I protect myself? And you're offered protection by some of these older MS-13 gang members, regardless of the fact they're going to beat you uh, to a pulp or perhaps even take your life in 13 seconds, a very slow 13 seconds. You look to them because you think, how can I be considered tough? How can I and my family not right. be bullied no, and you're, be protected? I, mean, look, you're right. I don't think those 11-year-old children, uh, quite frankly, are animals. And I don't think we should refer to human beings, even if they're bad human beings, as animals. Well, but look, people have all kinds of reasons for doing what they do, and sometimes it's understandable, but, I mean, people had reasons for becoming concentration camp guards. But if I called a concentration camp guard an animal, you would say, you know, he's not strictly speaking an animal, he's a human being, but I get it, he's horrible. Like, you're, you're expressing your outrage at what he does. If I said that, no one would bat an eye. But that's because concentration camp guards aren't potential Democratic voters. I mean, this is really about winning a, a constituency. Isn't it? This is a political decision Democrats have made. We're on the side of MS-13, not because we love murder. I'm not saying Democrats love murder. I don't think they do. But they don't want to alienate anybody on that side, including, I guess, MS-13 members themselves. I mean, let's be honest about what's happening. 
I don't agree with you there, although we are certainly in, in an era where left or right, a lot of things come into the landscape and are argued for a political gain, especially with midterm elections coming up. I, I don't think that's the, the, the point here at all, Tucker. I mean, you know that we liberals claim to be pacifist. We claim to care about everyone, and it is the terminology uh, that is uh, very unsettling. Pacifist? Uh, to a lot of people in the Democratic... No, yes, liberals are pacifist. Liberals are pushing... I mean, you're watching... Liberals across the spectrum, from you know Nikki Haley to Chuck Schumer, pushing for more war in Syria. They're bloodthirsty, actually. Wait, Nikki, wait, Nikki, about Nikki, when liberals. did Nikki Haley start wearing a Democratic cape? I must have missed that one. <laughs> and she started um, pushing for more pointless wars. But here, here's the point: if I came out and described a concentration camp guard as an animal, nobody would have a problem with it. I certainly wouldn't have a problem with that. You wouldn't. No normal person would have a problem with that. Normal people don't defend murderers but the democratic party is defending ms-13 and i'm just making a political observation which is that's not a wise strategy going into election because normal people aren't going to go for that, are they? Or maybe Tucker, they are. I'm, I'm going to go back to your concentration camp argument, okay? Yeah. Uh, being that I have one Jewish parent, I think you know, and being that I have relatives that did perish uh, in, in concentration camps, uh, there, were, there were a few types of guards uh, in the camps, quite frankly. One would be fellow Jews who wanted to survive and have a lot of guilt, and there are many documentaries about that, too. Okay. There are many okay. people that said they were just following orders. They were not referred to as animals, and quite frankly, uh, many of them escaped any type of uh, okay. criminal well, look, I, I don't, I don't want to get off on a World War II tangent, I, and that was one of a hundred examples. Jeffrey Dahmer, you know, anybody who commits murder for the pleasure of committing it, I think it's fair to criticize in the harshest possible terms, and it would be surprising if an entire political party came to that person's aid and defense, as the Democrats now are to MS-13. And I'm just asking, like, whose idea was this? It's not happening accidentally when you have John Harwood from The New York Times and Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi saying exactly the same thing. Somebody thought up this line. And I'm just wondering, do you think it's a smart thing to say? I don't think anybody thought up the line. I think what happens, and is happening almost every day, is the president says something or tweets something, and then there's a reaction, and certainly there's a strong reaction on the left, and there's been a reaction in the Latino community because, you know, a lot of the headlines were that the president said this about all immigrants at first, uh, and then when people read the transcript or they listened to the actual uh, taping uh, of what occurred in that meeting, uh, then it became more clear that he was speaking about MS-13, and it was a response by the sheriff's question regarding MS-13. But you also have to remember, Tucker, some people that are in MS-13 in this country begging not to be deported aren't a part of the gang. They just can't get out because the only way out is to be killed. But let me ask you this, the, the, and final question, but this is the deep irony undergirding all of this, which is MS-13 preys upon immigrants. I mean, who do you think their victims are? Overwhelmingly Honduran, Salvadoran immigrants, mm -hmm. often illegal, by the way. Mm -hmm. So if you say, if Democrats say, you know, we are the champions of immigrants, why are they defending people who prey upon immigrants? It doesn't make I, any sense. I don't feel that Democrats are in any way defending uh, murderers. I feel that Democrats are saying that the president's choice of words uh, was not palatable for them and that no human being, how terrible a human being they may be, uh, should be called an animal. Because an animal but, doesn't but choose. They're part Trump of the life cycle. The time. But, but hold on. Let's be honest. They're holding the president to a different standard than the holding MS-13. If you came out and said Trump is an animal, I don't think for a second Nancy Pelosi would give you a lecture about Christianity or whatever she was pretending to believe the other day, the spirit of God in every part. I mean, they would just, they wouldn't even notice it because they think Trump is an animal, right? But they're offended when you say that about a Salvadoran street gang? I mean, I'm, this is a sincere question. Honestly, I'm not a fan of the president, but I would defend him if somebody called him an okay, animal because well I don't think a human being should be called that. And a you're person a should be you're a higher consistent standard liberal. than a gang. And I hope you will denounce that. I can't even remember her name, but that, that CNN contributor is always getting... Crazy on TV, you called him an animal. Anyway, Leslie, thank you. It was great to see you. Good to see you, Tucker. Dan Bongino, a former Secret Service agent and NYPD officer, also a contributor to NRA TV. He joins us tonight. So as a political matter, I know that you ran for office. You know politics from both sides. Sure. Do you think it's smart to run in defense, and they are defending, MS-13? You know, Tucker, this is the genius of Trump. Whether he yeah, plans well, these right. things or they're just extemporaneous moments when he says them, which they probably are, that's not the genius in calling them animals, although I agree with him 100%.
The genius is it is he doesn't apologize. He doubles down. And, and listen, I'm no big fan of the establishment GOP swamp rats. They're not necessarily the geniuses in D.C., but I can tell you this, Tucker, assuredly. The Democrats are most assuredly the dopiest party in D.C. because they constantly get baited through their anti-Trump animus totally into true. doing things they wouldn't ordinarily do. Coming out and defending <laughs> a group whose motto is rape, torture, and kill and going, hey, listen, they're just human beings. I love Leslie. She's my <laughs> friend, and I think she's great. I but like some Leslie of that too. commentary was outrageous, Tucker. I mean, think about what she said. Yeah. We're not comfortable with anybody being called animals. Let me get a little list for you of things the Democrats are comfortable with. They're comfortable calling NRA members terrorists. Um, Obama comparing Republicans to Iranian hardliners, tyrants, calling Americans deplorables who vote for Trump. None of that seemed, I mean, really? I love Leslie to death, but the phoniness of these comments is a little bit too much. But you're absolutely right that Trump baits his opponents into getting so far over their skis that they're kind of exposed as the lunatics they are. And by the way, they weren't this way two years ago. I don't think that Chuck Schumer, who's a pretty smart guy, a sober guy anyway, and a calculating guy above all, would have stood up two years ago and defended MS-13. He never would have done that because that's crazy. And now he is. Tucker, the examples are legion. Think about the running on the wall and that, uh, that Mexico was going to pay for it. The wall is pretty yeah. practical. But honestly, Mexico, the, the counting of that, it's probably not. Trump knows that. But <laughs> what does he also not. know? He, he, yeah, the counting there is probably not going to work, right? He understood, The beauty of this is he never apologizes. He never backtracks. And the Democrats, instead of giving some kind of a reasonable answer and counterpunch, what do they do, Tucker? They come out and go, open borders. Everybody should come into the United States. Everybody has a claim to United States yeah. citizenship all over the world, and we all should pay for it. And the beauty of it is Trump is the first candidate to not back down, not apologize. But this is the key. By doing that, he gets the Democrats to pull their pants down and show their butts for the first time. I don't mean literally, obviously, but show the American people who they really are. And this is what turned off the Wisconsin, Michigan, and yeah. Pennsylvania swing state voters. The Democrats no, jumping to totally the opposite true. perspective. No, it's, uh, as a political matter, it's brilliant. The downside is if people who would defend MS-13 ever take power, real power, we're in trouble. It's dangerous. And they're frauds, too, Tucker. I mean, them jumping to religious defenses, uh, quoting the Bible about calling people animals, the same people. But I mean, let's quote the Bible. I knew you in the womb. How about that one? It's exactly. interesting that the abortion actual party human is beings, quoting the New Testament. <laughs> <laughs> right. Actual human beings in the womb aren't human beings. But MS-13, God forbid we don't refer to them as human beings. I mean, the phoniness of the whole thing just stinks. I know. I know. Nancy, Nancy Pelosi, who's like an absolute extremist on the question of abortion. <laughs> lecturing us about uh, Christianity. That Hello, everyone. Hey, I'm just stopping by to remind you that liberals are insane! <laughs> Social justice warriors are becoming more violent and triggered than ever before. Anyways, be sure to subscribe to KGP TV on YouTube and have a blessed day. Yeah, man. Joining us tonight is Leslie Marshall. She's a progressive radio show host and a keen observer of the Democratic Party. Leslie, good to see you. Good to see you, Tucker. So you're, you're seeing all the leaders of the Democratic Party, Schumer, Pelosi, its surrogates, the entire American news media virtually, singing from the same song sheet. This is a coordinated uh, storyline. Who thought of this? What consultant convinced Democrats running in defense of MS-13 was a good way to go into the midterms? Well, first of all, I think it was very clear, uh, quite frankly, and I know fellow Democrats get angry at me, that the president was answering a question that the sheriff posed regarding the gang members. The issue yeah. here, Tucker, is not support of gangs or gang members. I have an 11-year-old son, and as you know, uh, MS-13 starts as young as 11 and goes up to 40. It's calling yeah. human beings animals. Now, wait a minute. I know when you look at what MS-13 does, it's hard to say, well, are they human beings? When you have an 11-year-old child 
who is fearful for their and their family's life in a very impoverished area, and you think, how can I protect myself? And you're offered protection by some of these older MS-13 gang members, regardless of the fact that... The left's love affair with the nation's deadliest criminal gang continues tonight. The howls of outrage reverberating President Trump dared criticize MS-13 by calling them animals. Watch. He basically seems to assume that everybody is part of MS-13. Very strange to hear the President of the United States speak in such dehumanizing terms. Clearly the President wants a war against Latinos. You might make that distinction between members of MS-13 and the rest of the Latino community and the rest of the immigrant community. I assure you that most of Americans don't make that distinction when he says we're animals. When he says we're animals, things are moving fast in this country. By 2020, defending Central American street gangs will likely be a key plank in the Democratic platform. It's close now. You can see it. Maybe Bernie Sanders will feel the burn a little more literally. Kamala Harris's campaign will certainly be stronger together with the added muscle of, <laughs> of Guatemalan street gangs. Uh, don't laugh. It's actually more plausible than you think it is. Don't believe us? Here's what CNN contributor Anna Navarro said this Wednesday about Trump's animal remark. Quote, Trump is in very bad company. Nazis referred to Jews as rats. Slave owners viewed slaves as subhuman animals. Now, here's what Navarro herself had to say about Trump just two years ago. Quote, should Trump drop out of the race? Yes, he should drop out of the human race. He's an animal. Apologies to animals. Apparently, Donald Trump can be dehumanized, and that's fine. MS-13, though, a gang that butchers high schoolers with machetes, that's too far. But on the left, that's exactly the state of play. As of this evening, MS-13 runs drugs, of course. It commits murders, and it terrorizes entire immigrant communities. But they don't ask questions about diversity, so they're okay. Questioning diversity is the highest crime you can commit, according to the left. Questioning diversity imperils their entire worldview. It suggests that people are not interchangeable, and the particular people who inhabit a particular country matter. That's unacceptable, far more unacceptable than, say, murdering a teenager in Long Island. That doesn't even warrant a serious attempt at deportation. They're going to beat you uh, to a pulp or perhaps even take your life in 13 seconds, a very slow 13 seconds. You look to them because you think, how can I be considered tough? How can I and my family not right. be bullied no, and you're, be protected? I, mean, look, you're right. I don't think those 11-year-old children, uh, quite frankly, are animals. And I don't think we should refer to human beings, even if they're bad human beings, as animals. Well, but look, people have all kinds of reasons for doing what they do. And sometimes it's understandable. But... I mean, people had reasons for becoming concentration camp guards. But if I called a concentration camp guard an animal, you would say, you know, he's not strictly speaking an animal, he's a human being, but I get it, he's horrible. Like, you're, you're expressing your outrage at what he does. If I said that, no one would bat an eye. But that's because concentration camp guards aren't potential Democratic voters. I mean, this is really about winning a, a constituency, isn't it? This is a political decision Democrats have made. We're on the side of MS-13, not because we love murder. I'm not saying Democrats love murder. I don't think they do. But they don't want to alienate anybody on that side, including, I guess, MS-13 members themselves. I mean, let's be honest about what's happening. I don't agree with you there, although we are certainly in, in an era where left or right, a lot of things come into the landscape and are argued for a political gain, especially with midterm elections coming up. I, I don't think that's the, the, the point here at all, Tucker. I mean, you know that we liberals claim to be pacifist. We claim to care about everyone. And it is the terminology uh, that is uh, very unsettling uh, to a lot of people in the Democratic. No, yes, liberals are pacifist. Liberals are pushing. I mean, you're watching. Liberals across the spectrum, from you know Nikki Haley to Chuck Schumer, pushing for more war in Syria. They're bloodthirsty, actually. Wait, Nikki, like wait, Nikki, about when liberals. did Nikki Haley start wearing a Democratic cape? I must have missed that one. <laughs> when she started um, pushing for more pointless wars. But here, here's the point: if I came out and described a concentration camp guard as an animal, nobody would have a problem with it. I certainly wouldn't have a problem with that. You wouldn't. No normal person would have a problem with that. Normal people don't defend murderers, but the Democratic Party is defending MS-13. And I'm just making a political observation, which is that's not a wise strategy going into election because normal people aren't going to go for that, are they? Or maybe Tucker, they are. I'm, I'm going to go back to your concentration camp argument, okay? Yeah. Uh,